Hey everyone, this is Manly Bad Eyes Hero, and welcome back to Middens. Previously, I found myself at a bit of an impasse, so I restarted the game. What you're first gonna see here is basically a summary of the terrible things I've been doing, and what a horrible human being I am in this world. Because you see, in a lot of ways I was playing this game the wrong way. I was treating it like a normal exploration game, when in reality, it's more than just an exploration game. And you really can't ignore the RPG mechanics to fully experience what this game has to offer, even if that involves killing innocent cats with skeleton butts. When we get to the actual main Let's Play portion, I'll go on and start explaining what the actual game is about as far as plot-wise, because I've managed to wrap my head around it after, during this playthrough now, while before it was a bit confusing to me. So, now that I've replayed the game a bit, done some killing, and uh, read some interviews with the creator, I've gotten a better grasp of what this game is, and I'll kind of go into it as I walk through the world a bit. The sadness will last forever. Yes, it will. So anyway, let's start off with the character of the Nomad. Now you're not really given much, much explanation for who the Nomad is. You're kind of just dropped into the game. But aside from the Nomad being a avatar for the player himself, he's also a representation of globalization. And you can kind of tell this in the design, and the creator actually goes on to talk about this. If you notice, his outfit is a amalgamation of various cultures and time periods. He's got the kind of knight helmet, he's got this kind of nomadic gypsy cloak, he's got some renaissance, Victorian area stuff in there. Uh oh. Yeah. 
Well, we'll discuss it as we're fighting him. He's got a mix of culture, and he's basically designed to represent globalization, how with increasing connectivity, a lot of the culture blurs into one hybrid culture. Like, race doesn't matter, he's masked. You don't really see what he is, like, race-wise. I don't think that's actually his hair, That's I think that's like, uh, kind of... I forgot the name of it, but it's the thing you see on top of helmets. And I think this also applies to the player. Like, he's your re avatar, he's your representation. And like him, you could be any race, you could be from anywhere, you could be from any culture, or you could be dressing any way. Aside from that, Nomad is an actual character. Ooh, man, you just totaled him. I think we're gonna have to Hunter Kig you. I don't know if you can, like, heal them alive or what. No, you can't. That's all I was saying. God, how did you miss that? He's an agile character. His world is gone. He, he, assumingly, I'm gonna assume he comes from some world like ours, or he may be coming from our world. His world's probably a bit in some vague time where everything's kind of melting potted together as well as culture. And something happens in his world. Ends, I'm assuming. Post-apocalypse. So he comes to the rift. The rift is a kind of crossroads. Anyone who doesn't have a place to go or their world has gone and destroyed, they end up here. And that's why the world is so chaotic and such a mishmash of things. Um, they, they've all pulled parts of the original world back with them. This just keeps going on and on, doesn't it? So Nomad arrives here, uh... Some kind of human coming from some kind of place somewhere on Earth. And the gun is also from his own specific world. God, this place is like fucking aliens. I need to get out of here. Now, I've been doing quite a bit of killing, and this supposedly will make them a little more hostile when they see me. More open to outright attacking like you saw there. There's a vacancy in my house. Feel like a roommate? I wouldn't mind. I definitely need to heal, though. Now, if you just explore this game, it's basically like any other exploration game. It's real worlds, you go around, it's like a dream. But this thing gets a little bit interesting. It gets very similar to Undertale, once you start killing.
What are you? Are you gonna like me if I do this? No, you don't. No, oh, 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 no, 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 no. We do not have the help for that. And you see, the problem is I can't really interact with too many people now. I'm in a bit of a vulnerable state. I don't know how much health I can really handle. I don't know if these guys want to attack me, if they are angry at me or anything. They could be relatively peaceful people, but I don't really feel like checking. That was a trap. But the game's purposely designed that way. You're thrown into an alien world. You don't know... After a certain point, you don't really know what's friendly and what's not. What's gonna not attack you like a wild animal. And there's a good chance you'll have to defend yourself. Because you won't be able to escape. So it's either just sit there and die, or fight back. But like the conundrum I hit earlier, is I chose a pacifist route. I treated this game like an exploration game, so I didn't get the full experience of this game. So I was stuck. If I hit a battle, I was pretty much screwed. This time around, I've been killing things, and even killing innocent things that I came across, just to get some levels. So I can survive in the later areas much easier. Revives one ally, that sounds useful. But this is kind of the question here. To survive in this world, I've been killing innocents, I've been... and also killing things which are pretty much animals. Um, like this battle here, if this happened and I didn't grind up for it, I'd be screwed. And that has to do with a lot of the dialogue the gun poses to you. He's... Um, he's a talking gun. And he's assumingly done a lot of killing in his past. Store states. So, like Undertale, it puts you in a dangerous situation and it also questions your morality. What will you do to survive? Can you go through and be a true pacifist? And there's two endings, supposedly, from what I read. Um, there is a normal, kind of, not really a bad ending, but a normal end. Which is pretty much what I'm beelining towards. And there's supposedly a kind of better true end. I do not know how I get to it. I guess it does have to do with your karma. Now, throughout the game, when you kill certain things, you get items called nothings. And these are essentially, they like, items you can't do anything with. They're normal items, for the most part. I just went into Berserk mode. Oh, well, too bad you're dead. And see, I just gained a nothing. Now the nothings, you see I got quite a few of them from all my random killing. Get bruised apricot. Faded cologne. Belly chain. Birdhouse. Family album. And so on. They're almost like trophies from the various things I've murdered. I gotta avoid these guys. I am really not in a state to go fighting anything without a save point. Which there is one right here.
Now, supposedly there's a way to clear your karma. I don't know where it is. I suspect that's how you go into the better ending. Ew. Because I don't see how you can survive in this game without killing. And that's kind of the moral dilemma here. When it matched into a random sequence of your approach, either rejects you from a match or succeeds by sheer luck. That one did defend themselves, this one did. Oh, look at Slender Man! Now, there's a very strong similarity with Off here, and like it's the obvious thing, the Chakra are very much like the other things the batter use, which are essentially nameless familiars, both kind of actually circular, at least one of the, a couple of these things are circular, one isn't. And they both have very specialized classes, while your character is kind of a mishmash of things. Of course, like Off or Undertale, they all share very similar themes, which you're seeing a lot of lately. And it's the question about pretty much glorification of killing that you've seen in a lot of games. And I believe this was even being brought up about the new Splinter Cell game and how many people Sam Fisher kills now in the last two Splinter Cell games in comparison to the previous ones where you made a very strong effort to avoid enemies and you could sneak by and be more of a natural person in comparison to like some diehard badass who just murders everyone in sight. Granted, I haven't played the game, so I don't know how true this is, but I did play Conviction and I did see how many things I had to kill in a very action hero way. Like these things are immune to magic. No, only his. Now, if you didn't notice, it's named Mara. Um, there's quite a few of the enemies are named after mythological or religious figures. So you're essentially killing gods. I don't know if they're literal gods, but they share the names of them. And another one bites the dust to my murder spree. Gun. You know, if you ever want to end it all, I'm here for you. When you finally tire yourself, head on over to your inventory of skills. The final option is waiting for you there, if you have the guts to go through with it. And I've gained the ability to commit suicide. Occasionally crying is the best line of defense one can have. Why not join the military like I'm doing? Or don't. Or sit in a ditch and slowly transmorg and find the peat. By question... Questioning? Questioning accepted people. I see. By questioning accepted precepts of truth and reality, nihilism fervors philosophical debate. Interesting. I'll shoot you. And 
and you can see the less animal of these beings really do plead for their life. Philosopher's chair. Creatures bleeding out the mouth. Gun. Won't be long now. Getting a fake mustache, though. The man who knells tells a prayer of prayer to the man who stands. that gun? Kill him! What the? Why do people admonish pride? Is it so bad to believe in yourself? Hilarious amount of XP while he was at it. This world is a bit interesting. One of these worms. Very strong moon theme in this game. Think about mucus. Excuse me, I just need to kill you to satisfy my bad ending. Oh my god, he just... he just... died. Team to put up a fight. I have a feeling they use the cat noises to make you a little more simp- oh... I eat sin. That's my shtick. Ah, so this is the character that eats my sin. I gotta remember this.
question is, am I strong enough to get through the rest of this game without killing? Mm, in the end, I'll have to kill more. I should just remember where this is and come back for it later. Oh, more words of wisdom from our gun friend. Snapping someone's neck. Why? It's just like turning a doorknob. Sorry. You didn't ask. Excuse my... gushing. I've been alone for so long. I suppose I've entered the habit of... talking to myself. 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 Prior to our meeting, I had nothing to do with all my time here, but whistle the old patriotic anthems. Biding my time just waiting to get back to the glory days. Or do I mean gory days? Glory days. Gory days. No matter. Those days are back again. Here, here. I'll tell you a secret to reward your listening ear. Any bullet I unload f that first doesn't kill its target. That bullet contains a tiny egg. My offspring. One day soon, it'll hatch, and out will pop a brand sparkling new magnum. That fresh offspring, my child, it'll garner itself a friend, and they'll become steadfast partners. It'll serve destruction on their behalf, spreading its seed with each passing shot. And that's the life cycle of us creatures. Kiss, kiss. Okay, we can still go back. Now you can take his dialogue right there as very much an allegory. I don't know if this allegory is the right word, but he says anything that doesn't kill in the first shot, it creates an egg. Now this can be both taken as literal, as it literally creates an egg that spawns a never talking gun eventually. But the main thing is, if it didn't kill him, that person's gonna want revenge. And now they have a gun, they got a talking talking magnum. So that magnum's gonna be like, hey, you remember that guy that shot you? You got a gun now. Let's go kill him. And this obviously creates a kind of circle of violence, and that's what it's trying to kind of argue here. That's an interesting world, I'll come back to that. If you want to be reborn, let yourself die. Fence world. It's a good save point. I can come back, that way I can come back quickly and cleanse my sin. Mbasa. It's almost like gravestones or trees. Or maybe sponges. 
Hello, person. There's no, be no need to fear. Why are you running? Wait, please read poems at my bedside. is like a river. It can flow in two directions. It can lead us to either freedom or bondage. I bet this one is barely able to defend himself. No damage. Wonder. Oh man. Play me a tune, piano man. Those who impute a crime are those who are most prone to it. And yeah, this world. Love applied to anything works. All you need is gun. You are immune to my gun. Once this creation has arisen, perhaps it formed itself, or perhaps it did not. The one who looks down on it, in the highest heaven, only he knows. Or perhaps he does not know. I've got such bad cramps. All I can focus on is the pain. Uh oh. Aren't you just curious as to what exactly is brimming under this mental carapace of mine? Not even I know what's cooking in there. I hope it's not guts in any case, since that seems the overdone fashion of today. Perhaps I'll molt my mental exoskeleton in the future and grow into an even larger gun. A mammoth gun that spurts dragon's breath instead of bullets. All will bow. That's some first shadowing if I've ever seen one. Age is a measure of what you've left undone. Pursue the path involves intensity, awareness of the wound, alertness to impulse, the possibility of a fall, and the possibility of gun. Guys, I guess they only dispel after so much time.
locked up in here since I was nine years old. Killing is killing whether done for duty, profit, or fun. When I write, I can feel my fingertips turn golden and my soul peek over my head. What the hell? Rift natives need not fear. Free credit cards for all. Spending will bring you back your dead loved ones. These dire times require we purchase consumer goods like never before. Plastic is a material not even the mountain dwarves could weld. Put handlebars on the brain of the planet and we'll control the seasons. Okay, politician. Oh god, the politician's mute to my abilities. The only thing my gun couldn't stop was consumerism. But, I can unplug it. That's one way to shut someone up. Ever dreaming you were dreaming within a dream? And while we're talking, you don't happen to have a human fruit, do you? I suppose you want to eat me. Oh, what's this I see? Delectable nectar of life. Mm. Sort of blunt and buttery. Probably shed from a pacifist. Thanks for the good eats. Whoa, I'm in some form of hell. Who do you think I am? If you could pick out all the words from the vocabulary that your mother taught you, who do you think I am? Zero go. I remember die quickly from the outside, and slowly on the inside. Hey, 
Hit list. game just keeps on going. And that's it for part 3 of Middens. In a lot of ways I feel like this is really part 1 Redux. Because when I first started going for the game I was very much a pacifist. And this really limited my kind of scope and um, scale of this game. Now that I've done, now that I've become essentially a serial killer and I've also just killed myself, although I did on a separate save file, we see that this game's message and meaning is a lot deeper, and um, even the scale of the game itself is a lot bigger. Uh, I assume when I kill myself, I would have ended the game, or maybe even deleted my saves. But it actually threw me, threw me into some form of afterlife. But I've got two save files here, so I can explore this kind of hell, and I also can reload and keep on my exploration of the world, and because it seems there's quite a bit left. I don't know how exactly they reached towards the end, but I did find the Cleanser of Sins, which should aid me in the quest for the true ending later. Anyway, I went over a lot of the themes of this game. I'll keep going over them as I go through this. I'd say at this part of the game, I'm pretty excited about this game now. As, you know, like I say, because I've understood it more, so. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching me play Minutes, and stay tuned for part four.